What's going on today guys? I hope everybody's doing well. In this video, we're going to be making the Elantra GT just a little bit louder. Well, I guess that's if you want it to be. So yes, you can probably tell by the title of this video, we are going to be installing a Go Fast Bits blow off valve. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what GFB sent me and also how to install the valve on the Elantra GT. So as you can see, GFB absolutely hooked it up with the swag and the blow off valve itself. But before we look at the blow off valve, let's go ahead and take a look at their product catalog because they offer several different levels of blow off valves depending on the uh, type of blow off valve or the type of diverter valve you would like. Now this is the response blow off valve, so obviously it's going to be in this category down here in the adjustable ones, but obviously they have quiet recirculating ones as well as uh, full atmospheric ones and uh, the adjustable ones in between. So let's not waste any time and go ahead and unbox the blow off valve that I have received for the Elantra GT. As you can see right here, it is the part number T9011, the response for the Hyundai Kia 1.6T. And I believe this might be the same flange fitting for the 2.0T as well. They have a nice QR code for um, learning about more of their products and stuff, as well as their website link right here. And here is the blow off valve itself. You can see it comes with a ton of nice packaging. Again, this is the part number right there. Of course, step-by-step -step instructions, which I'll be showing you guys how to do today, and information on how to adjust the spring preload. So a whole bunch of nice information right there. And the valve itself comes nicely packaged in this foam insert. Looks like the trumpeter um, thing here for atmospheric venting. We have the nice hex screws. And of course the valve itself with a little bit of extra hose. Oh man, the quality on this thing is insane. Of course it's full metal construction. We have the hex screw on top for adjusting the spring preload. Oh man, the quality man is just crazy. Nice o-ring gasket down here to prevent leaking. And of course, this is the response, like I mentioned earlier, so the um, adjustability can be done right here. So one last thing before we begin is I read through this instruction booklet really quick, and it's nice that they not only provide uh, vehicle-specific instructions, but also uh, vehicle-specific adjustment for the spring preload and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, Hyundai used an ECU uh, solenoid to control when the blow off valve vents and when it does not. And they have all that information in here, just like I said. But like I said, since the ECU controls the venting, it's basically how easy and how long you'd like it to vent uh, is for the adjustment of the spring preload. So like their instructions say, one method of doing this install, and probably the recommended method to do this install, is to remove the factory air box and uh, the recirc pipe right here to gain access to the OEM valve, which is down there. Um, it's the one that's on the end of this pipe. I'm not sure if you guys can see it right now. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the recommended install method which is removing the factory air box, uh, the factory research tube, and some of the other stuff to gain access to the valve. All right, so it's been quite a few minutes now, and if you are able to get this blow off valve and all the um, hoses off and everything from up here, um, I applaud you because that is one tight space and I cannot do it. I got one screw out and all of them seem to be loose, but I just can't fit my hands down in there um, or any tools down in there to get them off the rest of the way. So I have gone ahead and lowered the plastic shield on the bottom and we're going to access it from down below. And right off the bat, you guys should be able to see it. It is right here, this thing right here. Um, you can see the bolts and everything pretty neatly. So we should have a much easier time accessing it from down below here. Okay, so I finally got the OEM bypass valve off. Um, I would say it definitely requires um, some removal from the bottom as well. Um, I guess it's possible to get this off only from the engine bay, but 
uh, really from my experience I don't think that is possible now of course GFB does include a little longer um, rubber hose as well so I'm gonna see if I can use the OEM rubber one as you can see it's a little different size here but I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and reuse the OEM hose if not I will go ahead and use the uh, GFB supplied one uh, but anyways let's go ahead and get the um, response set up here get everything attached as needed and uh, get it on the car so I went ahead and attached the OEM hose on there um, I put the trumpet on as well because I do plan on using some atmospheric venting I'm definitely not gonna go any more than 50 50 and I'll probably go less than that even uh, just because I, I don't want to be that obnoxious anyways and you also need to make sure the brown gasket is on the bottom of the valve so it goes ahead and seals properly against the uh, piping. And of course, I'm going to be using the hex screws provided because these I think will be a lot easier to go ahead and tighten down uh, compared to the OEM screws. Alright, so the valve is now installed. Um, I definitely recommend doing this from the bottom because it definitely allows you um, more leverage and stuff for tightening those hex bolts uh, for the GFB valve itself. I ended up using the hose provided by GFB for the uh, vacuum and I just need to put this clamp back on here. Um, it is just a few inches longer but I think that is definitely beneficial for this valve and where the um, new vacuum piece comes out of the GFB valve. Now I just have to put the recirc port back on uh, the silver spot right there, assemble all the intake stuff, and we can go ahead and test it out. Okay, so now the car is fully buttoned up up top. I still have to go ahead and put the shield on down below. But one nice thing is I just noticed is I can adjust this valve uh, without taking anything else apart. Um, if you have small hands and are able to reach your right hand down in here, you can actually go ahead and twist the um, valve itself and adjust the bias for the venting. So um, obviously you probably wouldn't want to do this while the engine's hot, but after a while, after it's cooled down or sitting overnight, you can definitely adjust this without taking anything else apart. Now as for difficulty, it's not that difficult of a procedure to install this, it's just time consuming because everything is in a very tight confined space and I would definitely recommend um, removing the shield or at least dropping it down below uh, so you have access to the allen key when putting the GFB on or just uh, loosening the bolts on the stock BPV. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up putting the shield back on down below and we can go ahead and take it for a spin. Okay, so I just got back from taking my first test drive in the car with the new valve installed, and I have to say, I am pretty impressed. Uh, I played around with the venting bias on the valve from full atmospheric to full recirc, and on full recirc, you really can't even tell the valve's there. Um, so that is why I really wanted this valve for the car, because it gives you the ultimate adjustability of 0 to 100% of full atmospheric venting. So um, if you only want it open just a hair uh, to get a little bit of extra volume out of the car, you can do that. And like I said, GFB has a ton of different products that go from full research to full atmospheric and anywhere in between for a certain budget or for a certain feature list that you are looking for. So 
Like I said, you really cannot go wrong with GFB. And I just want to give them a huge thanks for sending this valve out for me to go ahead and install for you guys and supporting the channel for content on the new car. But like I said, the information will be down in the description below if you guys would like to take a look at a GFB valve for your car. They make a ton of plug and play applications like this one was for uh, tons of makes and models. So again, I would highly recommend it if you guys are looking for a bypass or a blow off valve for your car. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I have a lot of stuff coming for this car, but right now we're kind of in a limbo mode with the virus and such. But um, I'm hoping by the end of the month to have uh, a lot of the things I've been waiting for in so I can go ahead and get it installed in the car. So I hope you guys stay tuned to the channel and keep an eye out for those videos. But anyways, please hit that like button if you guys enjoyed it. Also comment down below uh, if you guys have any questions or any other comments about the GFB products. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.